G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Monday night here in Australia, so obviously going Monday morning over in the States, waiting for the CME to wake up, and we have had a fairly, excuse me, hefty sort of correction. Well, hefty is probably a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but reasonable. Bitcoin down at 54,000, Ethereum down at 1,800, and look, a lot of other coins that have dropped uh, a fair bit as well. Again, not, nothing too much, nothing to be completely worried about. But things were quite exuberant for a while, so we're just waiting to see what's going to happen when the markets open up Monday morning, particularly in the States. That has a lot to do with it, but also even in Asia when they sort of, you know, fire up as well. Because at the moment, what we can see is there's a fair amount of red in there. And nothing too horrendous, but I mean 15% down uh, is hurting a little bit. 10% there, 8% there. Definitely plenty of projects uh, that are hurting. And look, Synthetics Network was on such a run and, you know, starting to pull back. So it's about 20% down in the last seven days. I did buy some Synthetics Network the other day and I've got money on the side and I am going to buy more. But I'm just going to wait and sort of see what happens. Where, when do we find a bottom and start to weigh our, make our way back up? Because look, uh, I don't know exactly where it's going to stop, but I do think it's probably going to stop somewhere around, I'd say the 16 to the sort of $17 mark, but I could be completely wrong and it could go a whole lot lower. It could definitely go a whole lot lower. It might even find its way back down to around about sort of 7 or $8. We'll have to wait and see. All right, market cap. So definitely down. BTC dominance growing, ETH dominance dropping, but gas fees are still high. So people are still out there at the moment, you know, trying to sift through all the altcoins and just hoping to jump on a gem at the moment. But look, let's have a look. What's pumped in the last 24 hours? See, there we go. There has been coins that's pumped. So crypto.com did quite well. MDEX, IOST, HOLO, Terra, Bitcoin, Gold. There we go. Pundi X has just come out of nowhere. I had this earlier. And I just I couldn't sort of hold it for any longer. It just wasn't performing well enough. So, yeah. But then again, you know, 180, uh, you know, up 180% over seven days is great. But if it took six months for it to pump 180%, then it probably wasn't all that good investment. And that's nothing against Pundiax. I'm just saying that's why I sold. I held on to it for a long time uh, and nothing was really happening. Uh, and so I sold it and look. The last seven days it's done pretty good you can see there but will that last and is it enough to make up for you know either the gains that i made for investing into other coins we'll have to wait and see all right what's dropped in the last 24 hours because there's certainly a lots that dropped all right pancake swap of course that was going to retrace it couldn't help itself uh ren likewise went on a really good pump so of course that's going to sell off a little bit voyager token look a lot of big kind of you know, somewhat blue chippers. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Is Voyager taking a blue chipper? I'd probably say the top 10 are really the blue chippers. Everything outside of the top 10 is not really a blue chip. Still a good token for a, a lot of people. Just I, I haven't invested in Voyager token. Uh, I wish I had of. Uh, nothing against Voyager token. I just didn't. But again, it had a really big pump. This was well under a dollar, you know, not that long ago. Only a couple of sort of months ago. And so to go, you know, right up over i think it was over six dollars at one stage there then yeah of course that's going to happen same thing with uniswap cosmos so of course these gains uh these losses are going to come but again if you're down 20 percent uh in 24 hours but you're still up 40 percent for seven days then you haven't technically lost as long as you were in it you know prior than seven days ago but we have to wait and see i would not be surprised if these sell-offs continue but equally in saying that, there's been so much bullish news out there, and I've reported on it uh, in the last few days, that look, the markets could open Monday, as because there's normally a sell-off around about sort of Sunday, or at least over the weekend anyway. It can often happen somewhere around Thursday night, right through to Sunday night, Monday morning. And then the market just picks straight back up and continues to go on. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, let's have a look at Bitcoin. Here we can see... And this is why I'm not overly bearish at the moment, because we drew this line days and days and days ago. God, when did I really start this line? So this was back around about the 10th of February. So that's, you know, 12 days ago, and it's still above this line. So we still are in an up market 
But look, you do have retracements in an up market, you know, s small corrections. So really, until it breaks this line and Bitcoin just continues to go up, I expect the altcoins to continue to go up as well. But they're going to have retracements. And that's all that's really going on at the moment. All right, let's jump on to some of the news stories. This one is pretty interesting. So Tesla is about to make more money from its Bitcoin investment than profits from selling its electric vehicle cars in all of 2020. An analyst at Wed, Wedbush Security said. Oh, there you go. So basically he's saying that, you know, they uh, has calculated that Tesla has made roughly $1 billion in the aftermath of its $1.5 billion investment. So there you go. That's pretty good. Invest you know, 1.5 billion and make a billion dollars in a matter of, I don't know, probably a month or two. That's not too bad, you know, double, almost double your money. They invested 1.5 billion, so not quite double, but hey, look, if you do that in a month or two, yeah, you're probably feeling pretty good. And it'll be interesting to see whether Tesla is ready to now sort of sell some Bitcoin or are they literally just going to hold sort of long term? That That's the question, you know. Michael Saylor, he's in it for the long haul at least that's what he says i'm not doubting his word but it's whether these other big companies that sort of come in and get in are going to do the same maybe they're just here to make a quick buck and flip it and then push the price down and try and buy more who knows again time will tell all right xrp price has surged 15 percent so Ripple, the company behind one of the world's largest cryptocurrencies, XRP, has registered an entity in the state of Wyoming. This follows a clash between the company and the company and the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. Nevertheless, the price of XRP has surged by about 15% today after Caitlin Long broke the news on Twitter. Now, let's see exactly where it is right now. Right, refresh. So it's already pulled back uh, some of those gains already. So it had a bit of a pump and then, yeah, kind of pulled back. So basically what's happening here is XRP uh, going to get their license in Wyoming. That's where a lot of crypto companies go to sort of get licenses and things like that and start up. They are one of the friendlier crypto states in the country. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens with this. And, you know, whether this really goes anywhere or, you know, not too much happens. But one of XRP's major investors, Japanese giant SBI Holdings, plans to form a joint cryptocurrency venture. So Japanese financial conglomerate SBI Holdings revealed that it was planning to establish a joint cryptocurrency venture that would serve as one of the company's key earners. According to Reuters on Monday, SBI founder and CEO, Yoshitaka Kitao, the company, the company was discussing with international financial firms to set up the new crypto business. The latest development was part of SBI's plans to expand its crypto business. So obviously they are massive holders of XRP uh, and it's you know taken a bit of a hit but they got in a long time ago. I mean the prices that they likely bought XRP for were you know probably a cent or two so they're still doing all right considering what's xrp sitting at around about sort of 50 cents or something yeah so they're still up likely you know around about 50x from when they got in all right last but not least though so two whales just withdrew a billion dollars from coinbase all right that's a lot was that michael saylor getting in and buying his bitcoin because i think he raised 1.05 billion dollars to buy more bitcoin today thirteen thousand two hundred and four bitcoins left coinbase for unknown wallets that's just over three quarters of a billion dollars at the current price according to whale alert 36 separate transactions were made each valued at 351 and 391 bitcoins between the hours of 4 and 5 p.m utc time Last night, Whale Alert tweeted that 4,501 BTC had left Coinbase for an unknown, unknown wallet, meaning that in the past 24 hours, more than a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin has been transferred out of Coinbase, though it is not known whether the transactions are related. It doesn't really matter whether they're related or not. What that shows is that people, or you know, because it might have been an individual, who knows? I think that's probably a little bit unlikely, more likely an institution, but Bitcoin is still being bought. The market is not ready to suddenly take a big massive turn. And I would have to think 
that the Bitcoin that is available at the moment is probably starting to get pretty tight because I would say there's not, well, I could be wrong. Maybe there is actually people who are really happy to be selling Bitcoin at 50,000. I don't know. I'm not happy to sell my Bitcoin at 50,000. But in saying that, I did sell some a little while ago, but I just had to simply take some profits and had have cash sitting on the side. So I sold a very small amount of my Bitcoin. It was only 10%, but I sold about 10% of all my crypto. So it wasn't just Bitcoin. It was literally everything that I had. I sold 10%. So I have cash sitting on the sides. Should there actually be a big correction and dip, then I can just buy back in. And if not, then at least I just have cash on hand. Because while I love crypto and I'm all about it, cash is still king at the moment. It's not dead yet, and I think it's a long way from dead. I think we're going to you know, be dealing with cash and a fiat version of cash for a long, sorry, a digital version of cash for a long, long time to come. The dollar is not simply going to just die like that. It is going to... You know, I think there will be a new wave of how money is handled and I think the digital dollar will probably be around for a long time but what the digital dollar gets based off I think is what's going to change because the American dollar is just not going to last and it wouldn't matter what single currency we went to you know we go to the, the British pound or you know the rupee or who knows whatever money is out there and it will still suffer the same fate. So I do think a mixed basket of currencies is likely how they're going to sort of rebase the system. How, you know, whether that works long term, well, gee, I guess that's really the question. All right, I do have to apologize for the really late video. Uh, it's been a really long day for me. So I haven't had as much time as what I would like to sort of get, you know, this video done and get it to you at a much earlier time. But that is life. There's not much I can do about it. All right, just a quick one from me tonight. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. There were gains out there, but it's, you know, a little bit kind of mix and match. I'm sure you gained in some and then lost in a few others. All right, I'll see you next time.